Welcome back to Behind the Bench, presented by your local Jeep dealer. Now it's time for another session in the film room. Now what we'll talk about today is a defensive zone face-off and, and a detail on this face-off. We call it weak side coverage. This is the weak side winger here. Now the first couple of clips will show how not to do it. Uh, the next two clips after that will be the proper way of doing it. We're always trying to defend this part of the ice in the slot area here. Now you watch what happens here in this face-off. Michael gets beat. Michael Sauer gets beat. And there's Pruster. Pruster needs to be there even quicker. He needs to stay in that area of the ice so he's there to strike this play here. It's called a support tight defense. We get beat by, uh, two guys get beat. He needs to be there. He's a little bit late and gets a shot on that. Let's go to the next one. Same type of situation. It's a face-off play. They're going around. Now this player here needs to stay in the slot. The only time he goes back to here to cover this point or to try to block this shot if the puck is moved to him. We try to keep our guy low in that area there. He leaves. Now he's too high and watch what happens. This guy pops off, pops out into the area where he should be. He should be able to strike this play and him not even get a shot. They make it to him and they get a, a pretty good scoring chance on Hank. Doobie should have been right in that slot area, shouldn't have left. The other two clips, will we do them right? Stopped. He's in that area. He hasn't left. He's in that area. Same type of face-off play. You're looking for this guy. He's able to strike. He, he, this guy can't get a shot. They have to move it back to the point. So he's in good position. Positioning off a face-off. Next one. There's our guy. He hasn't moved. Stayed in that slot. Stayed there. Same thing. This guy is coming out. They're looking to try to get him the puck. Because he stopped there, he's able to strike this play. And they, they can't even get him the puck. He's in such good position, they'll even try to get him the puck. When you go over a film with your team, and let's say it's March, would you ever bring something back from October if you wanted to make a point? Yes, yes. I, I think, uh, at least the way we try to do it, we do very little individual tape with, indi with, with a single player. We do it all within our theater, within the whole group. So when we're teaching, let's say you're struggling in an area and we're showing you a clip, we're not only teaching you, but also everybody else is watching. And so they're learning also. So uh, contrast is a, I think is a great tool for a coach. And let's say in October, uh, our back pressure was, uh, was so good. We were breaking up plays in the neutral zone so we can transition. Maybe in March, we're getting a little lazy. We're getting caught with three on twos, whatever it may be. We'll show some clips just to show contrast and where our success was then to where we're struggling now. Mike, how about you when you use the film? Well, I think it's a great tool, and certainly uh, even when I came into the league many years ago, we we were the one of the first teams to do it. Was were there even what kind of tapes were it was back VHS then? then. Yeah. No, real not in real. '78. Real to real. Real to real. <laughs> no, it was VHS actually, and Roger Nielsen had a big influence on my career because Roger, Captain Video, really pressed it, and I came from a teaching background, so we had uh, used that tool and Peter Bro when I was with uh, the junior hockey club and a lot of teams didn't so it's a, a great visual uh, a capability that the people have to absorb and learn. You, you can't hide I mean it's it's there because so, sometimes a player and, and it's good stuff too uh, I, I think that it really think, backs up though be, before you just tell a guy and they say well no that, that's exactly, not me. Exactly you, you can't say, well, hide here. there it is yeah. and it's important be, and, it, and it's not to run down a player all the time it's also good pump up. to pump them up. Everybody thinks when you show video it's to it's to get down on a player and it's mistake after mistake. I mean I, I'd say 70 30 uh, we're showing especially when, when we're having a little bit of a run here we're doing a lot of good things so you have to show them that also not always bring them in when things are going wrong all right guys coming up you asked for it as the coaches will answer questions from you the fans that's when we come back on behind the bench stay with us everyone welcome back everyone to behind the bench presented by your local jeep dealer all right, guys, time for you ask for it as the guys will answer questions from you, the fans. Let's begin now with question number one. Coach Tortorella, what's your plan for how many games Henrik Lundqvist will play this season? All right, Mike, thank you very much. So Same what game. do you think? I'd say uh, Hank will probably get in the area of 63 to 67 in that area there. Is it that program? Is it that? In my mind, it is. I, 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 again, I don't get too far ahead in the schedule, but uh, let me tell you, he's just not, he's not playing 
uh, the amount of games that he has played before. And I think we've got a pretty good one in, in Marty Biron as far as a backup, and he's had a great start. Have you ever seen Lundquist as good as he's been to this point in the season? I, I think he has, from the last quarter of last year to where he is now, has shown a tremendous amount of improvement from his game. You know, it, he's a really good goalie, but I think he's improved the last quarter of last year and the beginning of What's this year. What's gotten better in your estimation? I just think his consistency uh, um, and uh, he, it's just his overall game. Uh, and for us to get where we want to be, uh, he's going to have to be better. Uh, because it comes down to playoffs. We, that's where a player makes his, his mark, is, is what he does in the playoffs. But I, I, can see, I see him improving. He's such a great competitor. And I think Ben does a great job with him. He's improving. Well, I think the key here is, is uh, Baron. He can win hockey games for you. I coached one year in the league. Our backup got zero points. Zero. How many times and did you yank him? And he played <laughs> 10 games. How many times did you yank him? I should have yanked him more often than I did because you, you can't go through a season and not rely. We had Glenn Healy. Glenn Healy was great for us because he could win games. And if Mike ever went down with injury, he could still win big games. And that's very important for the team to know. All right. Time now for question number two. Guys, I was wondering, do you think hockey players have a higher tolerance for pain than other athletes? All right, Joe, thank you very much. I think they have uh, an incredible pain tolerance. Uh, I'll go back to where I, I was fortunate enough to be involved in a team that went the distance, ended up winning the Stanley Cup back in Tampa. And winning the Stanley Cup was great, but one of the greatest things that I got out of that was watching how these athletes played for 61 days, uh, getting shot up, playing with broken bones, broken hands, whatever it may be, and simply not giving into it. And uh, uh, that was the, the greatest thing for me to see is how those athletes conducted themselves. We're a very, uh, our sport, uh, the mindset of our athletes and how they go about their business is unbelievable. And uh, uh, again, I, I marvel at it, at some of the athletes as far as what they play through. I think it's, uh, uh, it's, a, it's an unbelievable situation and we're there, we can see it. Not, the media talk about. We watch what happens and what they have to go through. It's unbelievable. I appreciate football players and the dangers and the collisions and the physical contact, but this is unlike any other sport. Basketball has the same number of games as we do and baseball have more, but they don't have the contact. And to play, in this example, we played one year 26 games in 52 nights just the mental anguish, the physical, and these games in playoff hockey is like playing two games instead of one in one night. And to have the endurance, the physical capability, the mental stamina to deal with the pain, the suffering, that's why this cup is so incredibly difficult to win. All right, we have this. Warren from Long Island writes in, during the last Behind the Bench show, you talked about players conditioning. Who is the best conditioned athlete you have coached in the NHL? Oh, that's a tough one. I, 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 I would be wrong to name just one because I, especially, uh, I can't remember way back, but the past few years, athletes nowadays, they take care of themselves so well and, and, it's, and it's just gone to another level as far as the fitness trainers they have with them and, and, and just the technology involved in it. Uh, you don't find too many athletes that are not physically dead on as far as uh, their conditioning. So it's tough to pick just one. How about the guys working out in the weight room after a game? Yeah. I'm amazed by that. <laughs> I, I, that is that something? No, but they have to manage the, the schedule. They don't have time. <clears throat> yeah. You can't be doing some of that power lifting the day before a game. But They've after do a it. game? I mean, it's oh, a yeah, you, yeah. you don't insist upon that, right? Is that No, we, it's, a structure, it's structured. Oh, okay. Yes, it is structured. And some guys will do more. And, you know, just going today, when we... We have two games in between games, and I felt we've had some days off because our schedule's spread. We put them through a little bit of a conditioning skate today, and uh, you, you decondition as you play during the season. You cannot continue to gain your conditioning during the season because there's just too much travel and too much going on. It's the team that doesn't decondition this way and just, just gradually goes down. I watched our athletes skate today, and they could have gotten through this skate easily at the end of camp. They struggle through it because you do lose some of it because of just the travel and the wear and tear in your body. So it's a huge part 
of uh, what you can do in the summer, because it's something you can control, is to be in the absolute fittest, fittest part of your, the fittest area of your game is your conditioning, and you can control that, because then it helps you throughout the year to try to maintain it. All right, guys, great hockey talk once again. Mike, good to see you. Coach, good to see you. Thanks, everyone, for watching this edition of Behind the Bench. We'll see you next time.